Hey guys, welcome to the VFX vlog where you get to ask me filmmaking and visual effects related questions and I will try my best to answer them. In the first part, I am going to rant a little bit about how visual effects are used and misused in film projects and then in the second part, I am going to show you how important the render order is in After Effects. Especially when working with masks and effects, it can get you into sticky situations and I am going to show you how to use pre-composing and intelligent nesting to solve your problems. <laughs> A couple of times already I've been approached by college or high school students working on a film project to help them with a certain visual effect. Now my first question is, why do you need that visual effect in your short film? Does it have a purpose? Does it help the story in any way? A lot of people actually add visual effects just for the sake of adding visual effects. Now if you're Michael Bay and you have a million dollar budget, you can probably create visual effects that kind of make a movie. At least they're jaw dropping enough to pull people into the cinema. Now for indie filmmakers that's usually a bit harder. I've seen a lot of short films out there that are basically strings of random visual effects but I mean as cool as they may be and as well as they might work as a showreel, as a story they don't work. It's not a short film, it's like connecting random scenes with visual effects in them but it doesn't tell a story, it doesn't pull me in, it doesn't get me emotionally invested in the story. To give you an example, one of the short films that I was asked to create a muzzle flash slash bullet hit for at the end is at the end the main character gets shot. But why do you necessarily need to show that? Couldn't you have someone raise the gun to the camera, shoot and turn to black? No visual effects required, probably just as much of an emotional impact if that ends your story or even if you cut to black for a short moment to you know, convey the message that someone just died and then resume with your story. But you don't necessarily need the visual effects to convey that effect. On the other hand, if you had a magician you know, casting a summoning spell or something, you might want to add some visual effects to make it look a bit more appealing within the story, but you could work around the visual effects just showing the visit's face, some clever lighting effects and a few other very simple things that you can actually do without post-production. Now don't let me or anyone else really tell you what to do. They're your own projects, your own short films, your own visual effects. Do what you like, be creative. And some of the greatest movies of all times have been created by people who just did not care about the rules. They just threw it out the window, made an awesome movie. Like look at some of the movies Quentin Tarantino made when he first started. It, it broke all the rules, all the norms. Nobody knew what the hell was going on, but everybody loved it. So it's not like you have a set of rules that you need to follow to make a great movie. All I want you to do is keep in mind visual effects are expensive and complicated to create and unless they help your story somehow, they might not be required to convey the story and get the emotional impact across to your viewers. Now let's jump into the After Effects part of this vlog. This is a common problem that people come across. They set up a layer in After Effects, they apply some effects and then apply some masks. However, the ordering of when After Effects actually renders the masks and the effects is very important because you might get results that you're not expecting or that you don't want. And to work around those things, you can often use pre-composition and clever nesting of your layers. And I'm going to jump into After Effects now and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, some of you might actually recognize this clip. This actually comes from my Lightning Hands tutorial where Jimmy kind of deep fries me because I beat him at a game. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some lightning just to show you the render order in After Effects. If I now create a new solid and call this lightning, and I'm going to search for lightning, in my effects panel and if you have a newer version of After Effects you will have advanced lightning, you can also use lightning effects, it's basically the same thing and apply that to my layer. I've now created a simple lightning effect. Now I could say "Ooh, I only want this lightning to go up to Jimmy's head so what I'm going to do very cleverly I'm going to draw a mask around my lightning up to his face. However this doesn't work, it, even though I have a mask here it didn't actually cut off the lightning. And the reason for that is the render order in After Effects. Now the order After Effects actually renders your layers is bottom up. So it first will render this layer and then on top of it will render the lightning layer. But within this layer there are a number of different elements. So if we expand this lightning layer you will see there are masks and there are effects. Interestingly enough these ones are actually applied in exactly that order. It will take the lightning layer, apply this mask and then it will apply the advanced lightning effect over that. Now let me show you another quick example. Let's hide this lighting for now. Let's take me, let's just cut off my ugly head. Yep, exactly what we expect. The mask is applied to the layer so only my head is visible. Um, let's zoom in a little bit on that. And now let's apply a glow effect. Increase the radius and jack up the intensity and you can see, um, let me just black this out, you can see that the glow is going over the mask. 
Now, in this case, that might be what you want, but in terms of the lightning, it might not be. Um, let me quickly remove the mask as well as the glow effect on this. I'll re-enable the lightning and jump back to the default view. We would want the mask to be applied to the lightning effect as well, or any other effects we apply. Let's say we have a glow effect on the lightning. Now, this looks a bit dodgy, so let's just set this to additive to make it look a bit more fancy. Um, let's say we want this mask applied to this lightning. What we have to do, we have to pre-compose the layer with the lightning effect. So if I expand this, you can see we have masks and then the effects applied to it. What we need to do is we want these effects applied on the lightning layer before the masks are applied. For that, we can pre-compose the layer. So I'm going to delete this mask. I'm just going to right-click and go pre-compose. I'm going to call this lightning comp. And I will move all attributes into the new composition. So this will move the, this lightning layer as well as all the effects on it into a new layer. So if I click OK, this lightning comp, if you look at the effects, there are actually no effects on it because all of the effects sit inside this comp on the lightning layer. This is where all of the effects are. So within this composition, there are no effects on this layer. So if I now apply a mask to it, the mask applies to the effect as well because the effect is really just part of this composition layer. Now, obviously, we might have to set this back to additive to make it look a bit more fancy and then you can blur out the mask as well. But again, this is just render order. If I now applied another effect on top of this, let's say we applied with the turbulent displace effect. Apply it to your layer. As you can see, it is applied after the mask. You can see it down here, master applied first, and then in our effects, we have the turbulent displace. This also means that obviously the turbulent displace results can go outside of your mask. If you wanted the turbulent displace to be constrained to the mask, um, again, you'd have to get rid of this mask, pre-compose these two layers, and then apply the mask afterwards. So just keep an eye out for this. If you're applying masks and effects to a layer and you're not getting the desired result, you may have to apply the effects to the layer first, pre-compose them, and then apply the masks on top of that. And that's all the time we have for today. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. As always, please leave any comments, questions, or suggestions down in the section below, and I will get around to answering them. If you would like to show some support, please subscribe, hit the like button on the video, share it around. It really helps out a lot. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you for supporting me throughout the year. It's been a great year, and hopefully we can push it a bit further in the next one. Also, don't forget to check out my Facebook or Twitter if you want some more behind the scenes and, you know, other information on upcoming events and other things that I'll be doing for Surface Studio. I hope you have a really great new year. Until next time, I will see you later.